kick your sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> How is it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lowdown Show Remix right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian WWE podcast that talks about NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters on Twitter. You can also follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy. He is available to follow on Twitter as well, at Corporate Cappy is where you can find him. If you would like to follow the podcast, and listen to it on the go. All you have to do is listen to us on Spreaker, iTunes, or Stitcher. We're available on all those platforms for you. Make sure you go give us a subscribe. And make sure you go download that Spreaker app. Available for all Android and Apple devices. A fantastic podcast app. I highly recommend you go and download that so you can chat with us while we are live right here on the air on Spreaker. If you want to watch the video version of this podcast and other stuff like that on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash nhbwr is where you can find us there and then make sure you hit that subscribe button that bell icon for all upload updates i am your host the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters and i will be joined by mr corporate cappy in a bit he is just late to the podcast so i'm going to start off the podcast by myself and he will join in Hopefully sometime soon, but uh, unfortunately he had to miss NXT this week, so I'll be doing mostly of the review. And when we've done the review today, guys, as you've seen on Twitter, if you have special edition of the Lowdown Show this week, we're including our TakeOver War Games predictions for this week. So he will be here for that for sure. He will chime in, and I'll patch him through when he calls on Skype. I got my headphones ready. got everything ready for that, but I will be doing the podcast by myself for the basically the first half of the show. In the chat, we have Tiffany from That Ass Podcast. Guys, awesome relationship-based podcast. They are live on YouTube every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Great stuff. Go get us a subscribe on YouTube. Hit that bell icon, too, for all, all their upload updates. I was featured on a – I was honored to be featured – on one of their uh, side podcasts called Cheek to Cheek, where they interview uh, certain fans from their podcast. And I am extremely honored to be chosen by the few so far. So, guys, go check that out. Go check out their podcast and follow them on Twitter and follow both Tiffany and James on Twitter as well. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, that's right. So, this is the special edition of the podcast. We're going to be doing the NXT TakeOver War Games prediction. We are also going to be doing the review in the first half. So all that jazz. I'm still working on maybe doing the Survivor Series predictions. Maybe not. Uh, I'm still having to figure out when I'm going to do it. If they, we do do it, it'll be sometime Saturday maybe. It might be myself. might be myself and a special co-host. Who knows? Um, but uh, we're going to try to get those out to you. And Cooper Girls just joined the chat. Death's favorite child is here, and I'm ready to play war games. Aren't we all to play war games? But... Uh, Anyways, before we get into any of that, um, usually I come out with like an update for the channel, and nothing really has come to my mind that I need to update you guys on what uh, this channel is going to be updated with, but uh, slowly getting some 2K18 content to you guys soon. I'm, it's been a really busy week this week again, uh, especially at work. I'm still trying to get some live streams done again. I'm hopefully getting some out to you guys soon. Just stay, stay put and, and bear with us as we... Uh, get through this busy week here but uh other than that um I'm excited we got a big weekend in the door to be this weekend we got nxt takeover war games obviously the <laughs> one show everyone is uh looking forward to i mean a couple weeks ago if you asked me um i would have told you like just war games i would have said fuck survivor series and that was it but they've actually done a semi good job at getting us hyped for that show they've done a really really good job at uh changing the matches and adding more hype to them and it just it feels a little bit better. Like I'll give them credit where credit is due. I give a lot of gripe for them starting the uh, brand warfare a little early, and I'm still going to give them gripe for that. They should have started this way back at SummerSlam. Could you imagine the build up from SummerSlam till now and how much it would have made a huge difference? But uh, yeah, uh, it would have been insane. But again. Um, they did a good job for what they did with the, the three and a half, four week build that they did towards Survivor Series. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, going to be a big weekend this weekend for Survivor Series. Lots of rumors, lots of everything, and I'm still going to get a Sunday Night Heat episode to you guys out on Sunday with any news and rumors, uh, maybe related to Survivor Series, maybe not. Um, I might even scrap it and do an NXT TakeOver War Games review instead, uh, depending on how much news I get. So we'll see what happens with that. But um, definitely going to have something out for you guys on Sunday for sure. So like I said, big weekend, big NXT weekend this uh, weekend as well with TakeOver War Games. And uh, 
one of the announced matches for the NXT taping that they usually do at the TakeOver event, and we're going to get it next week on uh, uh, on Wednesday, which it sucks because the people in the Toyota Center are already going to see it, and they're probably already going to see the result, and I'm, I'm going to pray to God that no one releases the spoilers on Twitter. I hope I don't find it, but Johnny Gargano facing Pete Dunne for the UK Championship is going to be a hell of a match, maybe even match of the year. We'll see. Um, we'll see what happens with that, but yeah, big weekend for the WWE and NXT this weekend. Keep it going in the chat. Hey, Tiff, I'm glad I got food before this. Chicken tenders, baby! Hey, and them chicken tenders. Enzo Mori be proud of those chicken tenders. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, so I'll get into the NXT review right now while I wait for Corporate Cappy to get online and uh, hopefully get this. He's in time for the the predictions. <laughs> I'm hoping, or else I'm gonna have to waste a lot of time. Uh, but he said he'll be on, so we'll see. Uh, I'll just get my notes up here and I get started on the review for you guys. So this week was okay. An NXT. It wasn't the greatest go home show in my opinion. Um, I think they could have done a lot better. They they missed. I mean, we did have the pre- the preview video for um, uh, the War Games match. Which it, it did a good job highlighting it. It was really really. Whoever does the promo videos in the NXT department is an awesome guy and awesome awesome work. And is a hell of a guy to to do these kinds of promos. They're they're awesome. It gets you right into the match. Um, they just did not do anything on the show itself. Like we didn't get any confrontation between teams or anything. I wish they would have done something, especially on a go home show. But uh, for what we got, it was okay. Maybe it wasn't the greatest show. I definitely, I would have said uh, Raw beat all three shows this week if I had to uh, vote for it right now. Um, NXT wasn't that great to outbeat the other shows like it has been lately. So it was okay for what we got. And uh, we started out with uh, a match that I thought I, I was going into with a lot more hype than what we got for the match. I think it was a little bit anticlimactic in my opinion, but uh, we start off with the Street Profits facing Tito Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. We had their little small little feud that we've been getting from them over the last couple of weeks, as you've seen with the Street Profits uh, cutting a promo on um, Tito Sabatelli's car, and they did what they did with the dry cleaning and them challenging to a match this week. Um, I thought we were going to get a lot more out of this, or at least uh, – culminate up to NXT TakeOver War Games, we would have got a War Games match. We might get a rematch. Who knows? We'll see what happens. But um, for what we got in this match, I thought it was decent. Uh, I didn't. Nothing really stood out to me in this match. I, I, again, it, I felt really underwhelming. Like I, I, I thought we were going to get a lot more of it. But not putting, not putting anything aside from these teams, Street Profits is a hell of a team. Man. They're getting so over with the NXT crowd. It's unbelievable. Um, I see these guys being a huge part in the tag team division going forward in the NXT division or NXT show. So I see a lot from them. I don't think this is the end of Tito Sabatelli and Riddick Moss. I think we're going to get a lot more out of them too going forward for uh, NXT. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Other than that, that was it for the first match of the card. Then we got the promo for the War Games match, and I am pumped for this match. Like they, the new, the, the cups, or sorry, the red, sorry, I'm reading the, what the chat says, uh, Cooper girl putting red cups all day. <laughs> um, anyways, um, the war games match, I'm looking so forward to it, I'm so hyped for this match. It's the way they have it built with the shark cages. And, and I love the rules, how there's only two members are going to start in the ring. And then every three minutes or three or five minutes, I forget what I read that one member of each team at random is going to be let into the ring, and then there's going to be no pinfalls or submissions until every member of every three team, every uh, third team, yeah, every three teams is in the ring, and that's when a pinfall or submission can start. So a lot of hype for this match. I'm very intrigued on how they're going to do this and how well it's going to work and how successful it's going to be, and are we going to get more War Games matches in the future? Is this going to be a yearly thing with NXT is there going to be is November going to be the official war games month for takeovers so we'll see what happens um I'm really pumped for it so we'll again we'll see what happens uh we moved on we had Ember Moon versus Mercedes Martinez and we got this announced uh last week that they were going to have a match with each other I was really looking forward to this uh obviously I'm a huge Ember Moon fan um and Mercedes Martinez is a beast uh definitely had a really really good showing in the Mayon Classic um 
So them two going at it was, I knew it was going to be a really good match. It ended up being a good match. I really enjoyed this match. Um, Mercedes Martinez definitely proven herself worthy to be in this women's division. Kept up with Amber Moon. Uh, basically was dominant for most of the match. And I really, really love Marcy. Mar- them, yeah. I can't even talk right now. I need my co-host. <laughs> Mercedes Martinez. I like her. I honestly, I love what she brings to the women's division. She's got that tough brute style. And we saw that, 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 back that chop that she did was insane oh my god that was nuts um but yeah uh i i think she's gonna be a huge part of the women's division going forward i don't think that we're this is the last we've seen of mercedes martinez uh for for good and this was actually a good match i enjoyed it uh ember moon winning with the eclipse uh pulling it off cleanly i, I love that finishing move ember moon looking strong for her Fatal four-way match. And speaking of, after this match, we got all four members. We start out with Nikki Cross coming through the crowd, eyeing down Ember Moon, and then uh, Peyton Royce made her way out, and then uh, Kyrie Zane made her way out, and we got a stare down between the four women and building up their match, heading into the Fatal Four-Way Women's match at NXT Takeover Houston. Um, I think they've done a good job with building this Fatal Four-Way match going into their match. At Takeover Houston, um, they had each of them had like a showcase kind of match where they've shown how strong they are and they've won in that case. And I think they're doing a really, really good job with the build of this match. It's really tough to pick who else who is going to come out on top on this because it could be literally any of the four. Everyone has a case uh, who can be the next NXT Women's Champion. So, um, keep it on chat. I heard the Warriors cage ain't even going to have the a roof, so this is going to be interesting. Whoa, that's going to be interesting. I'll have to bring it up to Cappy when he comes in here. But, uh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry if I sound bad, guys. I'm a little under the weather this week, too. <laughs> Hasn't been a good week this week. Hasn't been a good week. Um, yeah, and Cuba Girl is a huge Nikki Cross fan and wants her to win on Saturday. I mean, that's what I mean. There's so many fans between behind each girl. Usually there's also, like, a one girl that sticks out like a sore thumb that's definitely going to win. At first, when they first announced this match, I honestly thought it was going to be Kari Zayn, but literally every girl in this match has a case to be the NXT Women's Champion. Everyone has a backstory and a backstory of a feud building up to this that literally says, okay, they could be the next NXT Women's Champion. Like, you go look at a girl like Ember Moon. What she's co- co- gone through in the past year with the Women's Championship and not being able to beat Asuka, and now that Asuka's gone, she has her opportunity to actually win it here, and this could be her moment to finally get that championship. Uh, you look at a girl like Peyton Royce, who honestly is probably the underdog going into this match, um, and she could be the one to have that Billy that that uh, that Billy Kane or corner to make her you know help steal the match, and then you got Nikki Cross, who definitely would do wonders with uh, the women's championship, and definitely could be a a good build for that Sanity faction because you have already Sanity with the NXT Tag Team Championships if they come out with it after War Games, but. It all depends what they go in the direction of sanity after this. And then you got uh, Kari Zayn, who's the almost the likely favorite in this match, who would definitely be a another Oscar type woman's character in this in this case with the NXT Women's Division. And doesn't look like she will lose for a while now. And she definitely could carry that NXT Women's Championship. She definitely has that championship material behind her in that that, that championship face. So I think again, like there's. Multiple women here that could come out with the NXT Women's Championship and it would all make sense. So that's why it's really, really hard to pick someone in this case for that NXT uh, Championship or Women's Championship. And I just had Corporate Cappy sign on for Skype, so I'm actually going to try to patch him through. Um, hopefully, he can get patched through here. Um, and then we can get him on the air and we can talk some more here. <laughs> so give me a sec, guys, while I do that. But yeah, as I said, um, all four women definitely make their case to be the next NXT Women's Championship. So it's going to be a really, really good match on Saturday. It's definitely going to come down right to the very end. I think there's going to be a ton of near falls. And then whoever comes out on top is definitely a deserving champion because, again, all four women have their case to become the next NXT Women's Champion. So we'll see what happens. I hope Cappy can call soon because my voice is starting to go away. Ah, trying to last for the takeover predictions. God, got to last. I'm going to have some tea tonight. Something to ease my voice. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, we should move on while we wait, we wait for the call. 
Uh, we had Lars Sullivan face Raul Mendoza, and again, this is another showcase match. Um, basically, Lars Sullivan's basically like the Braun Strowman almost. He's getting the Braun Strowman's or Braun Strowman build of uh, okay. So we got Cappy calling right now. Let me just patch him through. And we got Corporate Cappy patched through here on the air. How's it going? I'm back. <laughs> Better than ever. Uh, I actually had the fucking weirdest dream last night. I don't know. Like, I dream of, like, weird, like, creative shit sometimes. Like, I feel like I should, like, start, like, recording my dreams for, like, wrestling <laughs> shit. Because, like, I dreamt last night that, like... SmackDown announced a new general manager after Daniel Bryan left, and it was fucking Eric Bischoff. Eric and Bischoff? Like, and, like, I, like, like lost my shit. I, like, jumped out of my fucking chair at home and, like, did, went nuts. <laughs> did Vince McMahon come out and go, Eric Bischoff? No, it was actually Shane that announced it. Oh, or, Shane. I, or, for some reason, Stephanie was the commissioner of SmackDown. I don't know if she won both or what, but... It, it was a pretty messed up dream, but yeah. that's all I wow. remember is Eric Bischoff becoming the new GM. <laughs> and you and Glorious Greg coming into the, 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 the podcast here at the same exact time. That's uh, ironic. Like, as soon as yeah. you, I passed you through, Glorious Greg types in the chat, he's here. What's going on, Glorious Greg? The Glorious One yeah, is maybe here. Maybe Kyle Masters is under siege. <laughs> Am I under siege here? What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> no, that, we talked anyway. about how overused that... That is no oh, under siege. Under yeah. Siege. Oh my they god. Even, I feel like Raw should have their own like thing to say. Like they, they they use the whole under siege thing still. I feel like they should have came up with their own. But yeah. And then we finally get the under siege uh, smack uh, Raw retaliation. Literally the day we called that it was going to happen. Yeah. Oh my god. It's just <sighs> anticlimactic as shit. Like way, way too, too late. late. Um. Uh, where were you uh, NXT review here? Well, I just finished talking about the uh, Fatal Four. The, the Fatal Four women had a stare down with each other, and that every single woman in this match has a case to be the next NXT Women's Champion. So it's going to be very, very hard to decide who is going to come out on top. I said that you got a girl like Nikki Cross. Maybe they're trying to build up Sanity. Maybe they're going to hold a lot of championships. You never know. Maybe they're going to keep the tag team titles on Eric Young and Alexander Wolfe. And then you have Nikki Cross, the women's champion. They can look like a dominant faction. Um, you got Peyton Royce, who, you know, he's got that Billy Kane in her corner. She could sneak out with the win there, and it would be a very, very heelish champion. Um, you got Ember Moon, who's had a rough year trying to get that championship. Maybe this is her moment to finally get it. And then you also have, obviously, the likely favorite, Kari Zayn, who would actually be like another kind of Asuka with that championship. It would be a great fit. She's got the look. She's got the presence to be that next NXT Women's Champion. So every single woman in this match has a case to be the next NXT Women's Champion. Oh, I agree. There's not like one standout person. It's crazy. So it's going to be tough, tough to pick, and we'll get to that in our predictions. But I just started talking about Lars Sullivan. He, he faced uh, Raul Mendoza, and it was basically just a showcase for his match against Cashizono. And I'm like, Lars Sullivan is almost like the, the the Braun Strowman of NXT. And I get this feeling, and a lot of people mentioned it on Twitter, and I think it's in one of our questions that um, WWE is going to eventually do Braun Strowman versus Lars Sullivan. In the future, it's going to happen. If they're building him up the same exact way, you know deep down Vince is waiting for the okay to get him get called up, and we're going to get Lars Sullivan versus Braun Strowman, Beast versus Beast, like just like Unstoppable Force versus Unstoppable Force. It's oh, well, you know that Vince loves those types of guys. So Yeah, I bet you he's got his, his close eye on Lars Sullivan. <laughs> For whatever reason, but you know, I can't get really get behind Lars Sullivan. I know, I know how dominant he is, and I get it. I get they're trying to build that next kind of character, and you, you know, you got to have someone to follow in those footsteps. You know, you can't just have Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman has got no one to face, man. He's gonna run through everybody, and then who else is Braun Strowman <laughs> gonna face, man? It, he's gonna need other people like gonna, his caliber of a superstar to, to fight bring against. Back Big Show and Kane, man. That's the whole. Yeah, they'll point. be dipping into the cookie jar until they fucking get more people up there. So I mean, we're gonna see Kane while he's sixty and a Walker coming out. And then facing Braun Strowman in a match, and then Braun Strowman's gonna fucking take like a giant dive when Kane will like barely hit. Like, it's just gonna be bad. Anyways, um, so yeah, he faced Raul Mendoza. Nothing really special here. Uh, we had a backstage segment with Johnny Gargano and William Regal, which is what uh, 
what came out of it is what I said in the beginning of the show where we got announced that Pete Dunne will take on uh, Johnny Gargano for the UK Championship. And it's going to be at the TakeOver event, but it's for the taping of NXT the week, like the, the Wednesday following, which sucks because I said it earlier while well, you weren't here that the people in the Toyota Center are going to see this match. Yeah, I hope they don't they leak it. it. That's yeah. why that's what's going to piss me off. I really hope I don't read a spoiler for that. So, yeah, some goon like they do. like I know some websites are good and they put spoilers for the match. And if all you have to do is you click the link to see the spoiler, I hope I don't see a goon just actually type in the result and tweet it. I'd be pissed. That wouldn't but be good. That's why I mean that 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 kind of match doesn't this shouldn't be on a taping. It should be actually at the takeover. Like of all the matches to put on a pre-match taping. Or a pre-show taping. Like I'm looking at the card, and you only have five announced matches. And could you, you could have dealt put Col- you put a could cash its Ono and Lars Sullivan on next week's taping, and replaced it with Gargano and and Dunn. And you would have had a stacked card. Maybe that's why. Maybe they just didn't want it to be so stacked to overpower Survivor Series. You know, it mostly is. True. They just didn't want it to go overboard, right? I don't know. That's yeah. just my guess. Um. But yeah, we got that. We had the backstage segment I mean, this week on NXT with William Regal announcing that Johnny Gargano will take Pete uh, take on Pete Dunne for the UK Championship on next week's taping of NXT, which is huge. That's like match of the year potential right there. So we'll see, man. We'll see if it if it get if it if it's anywhere close to what Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne did at NXT Takeover Chicago, because right now it's still the match of the year. So far, oh, we're almost we've had December. to hear that from you for the last like four months. There's then, nothing that's... else. There's nothing else that compares to that match. Nothing. Mm, Baron Corbin versus Sin Cara, man. I mean, it's going to be tough to beat. All right, so I know you're with. Or me actually, uh, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait till the ten moment to give my tribute to somebody. Okay. Go ahead. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll move on, and we moved on into the main event. Which was the face to face between Drew McIntyre and Andre Cien Almas. Should have and... just been Selena Vega versus fucking Drew McIntyre this <laughs> one. Jesus. Um fix a beast. So McIntyre came out and he ran actually a pretty good promo on Almas and it was really, really awesome. Like I forget what he said, but the crowd was like, ooh, like it was really good. Um and it made Almas pissed off, and he came out, and they just started brawling with each other. And as they're brawling, Drew McIntyre turns around, and Selena Vega is just doing a, a cross body off the top rope, like, the, and then he catches her with one hand, like just one hand. And it was kind of awkward because his hand was on like the crotch area, and it was like, what the fuck, man? And then he's kind of like, it was awkward because he just put her down, and they kind of like awkwardly stared at each other, mm. and it were like yelling. And then uh, he turned around and, and almost beat the shit out of him and gave him his finisher. And then uh, we ended the show with Vega holding the title and pointing at it while almost stared at it. Oh, so very interesting. Yep. Yeah. So we end the show with almost looking strong. I mean, almost has been built so so strong and pushed so so strong the last month and a half, almost two months now. It's crazy, man. It's he's slipping into that main event caliber, and it's it's good. You you need a star like that, man. He's been at NXT for so long. He came in as the the guy, the jobber guy to job to the 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 recent signee or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's good that's where he's come from to this, and now he's got a good manager for almost. And she's probably gonna be a candidate for manager of the year, um, for. For just going from that to that is insane. So good for Cian Almas and looking really, really dominant in the last month now. So we'll see what happens. Maybe he comes out the championship. Maybe he doesn't. We'll see. But uh, that was that actually, again, it was underwhelming. We had only a video package for the War Games match. We had no actual physical altercation between the teams. So I, it's weird. And I said at the beginning of the show, Cappy, that Raw won out of all three shows this week. And it's sad because NXT has been winning a lot the last couple of weeks. To me, like, this wasn't a really good go home show for NXT, but it was all right. It wasn't great. It wasn't their best work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from what I saw in the highlights, it wasn't. It didn't look like it was, you know, a, a must see episode, but it definitely mm-hmm. wasn't like, you know, terrible. And I mean, NXT can't have a great show every week. You know, no. Vince wouldn't allow that. No, <laughs> I don't even know Triple- if he can. 
tells he, Hunter, you know, hey, Hunter, take it easy. You know, give him yeah, some take it easy, man. Come on, so man. Well. I know I have crappy bookers, but come on. I try to make Roman strong down here. Damn it. And Sheamus. They want Sheamus. They definitely don't want Sheamus, but <laughs> oh, man. they're giving us Sheamus. Great. <laughs> but, yeah. Mm-hmm. I really have no, nothing else to say about this NXT episode. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i guess that's it so we'll get into our uh second part of the show and that is the list of 10 10 you know what you know what happens you know what's gonna happen you just made the list That's right. Welcome to the list of 10. That part of the show where myself and Corporate Cappy give a superstar or woman a perfect 10 rating or it makes the list rating. And we'll start off, as always, with Corporate Cappy. My list moment is going to be more of a farewell list moment. It is the WWE releasing James Ellsworth. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Why? (laughs) This guy is so over. Main event talent quality, man. This guy... Main... Stop it. Main... Stop it. This could have been the next Daniel Bryan of the men's singles. You're... You're huffing paint. (laughs) Realistically, James Ellsworth, he was a good comedy act for a while. And then he got... Well, to some people, he got stale. But I actually liked when he turned heel and became Carmella's lapdog. It, it was good. I liked it. I, I think Ellsworth had a spot on, t- on TV, man. Yeah. I think you didn't give him enough chance. You know? Didn't give him enough chance, eh? Yeah, I, I think he he could have got over with you know with the right gimmick. You know? But either way, James Ellsworth, for having his one-year you know run in, uh, in WWE. This isn't even a list moment. This is going to be a 10 moment. I just changed the my mind. 10? Why is it a 10 it's moment? It's going to be a 10 moment because it's not a list moment. Well, I guess it's a list because he got released. But so you got to decide. It's a, it, for, it, it's, it's a clap for the great one-year career of James Ellsworth in WWE for the fact that he was one count away from defeating AJ Styles for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, How many people can say that? I mean, no offense to our boy Ty Dillinger, but he hasn't gotten two wins over AJ Styles yet or even a sniff at a world title He actually match. almost beat him. He yeah, was close to a two and a half count. That was nah, a U.S. title. World no, world title is way better. Remember Jinder, man. Jinder, you know. For... Anyways, James Ellsworth for you know getting what? released this week. You know what? You just made the list. Just made the list. Sad day for, you know, <sighs> Justin Ellsworth out there. Stupid. Hey, he, his, damn el- his elite figure didn't even come out like yet to the public before he got released. Right, because they so. knew he was going to be released. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. My perfect 10 moment of the week. And it's a kind of a, a congratulatory one. And that goes to Monday Night Raw actually producing a good go-home show. I'll give it a little, a little golf clap here. That was actually a decent Raw show. Definitely the most decent go home show that we haven't that we've gotten in a long time. We haven't had one of those in a long time. But it was decent. I liked it. Except for the ending. Except for when we got Braun Strowman versus Kane in the main event of Raw on November what was that? November Let me open this up. November thirteenth, twenty seventeen, Kane is main eventing Monday Night Raw. What about the three that big show's main event? Why I don't know. <laughs> People are telling me that they're trying to put over Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman doesn't need to be put over. The guy's already fucking over. This was literally used. They could have done something else. Maybe build towards Survivor Series. I don't know. It was like, what, a week away? Gee. Heaven forbid we continue with the build for Survivor Series since you only have three weeks to fucking do it. No, no, we got to bring Kane back for whatever. He's not even on the fucking pay per view. <laughs> not yet. Anyways. Farah actually producing a decent go home show this week. It gets a perfect ten. God, I can't believe I gave it a ten. It's weird, but Raw? Wow. Right? It's interesting. Maybe it's, it's because gender's not champion week. anywhere. First time in twenty seven weeks it's been a good episode of Raw. And it comes the week after Jinder loses the title. <laughs> But he's not even on. He's not even on Raw. But the the wave of of it's the wave. It's the wave it creates. Oh my god! You're blaming Jinder for something that he's not even on. <laughs> yeah. 
That's not fair. Justice for gender, man. Justice for gender. Get out of here with justice for gender. <laughs> Anyways. What so, is your perfect 10 moment? Uh, well, it's obviously going to be Jinder Mahal's promo on Smash. I, I, he had kidding. a promo? No, he didn't even have a promo. I was just saying it. <laughs> oh, he wasn't My, there. That's I, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got to talk about that after, too, because I'm sure you got something to say about that. But... My my ten moment this week is gonna go to the odd pairing of Samoa Joe and Finn Balor in that tag team match against Gallows and Anderson. They actually looked really good in that like thrown together two singles guys in a tag team match, and like they actually like were tagging in and out. They actually looked like they were working well together, even though they hate each other's guts. So I, I really like that. It was just like a throw in match. It just kind of happened between two of the five guys in the men's Survivor Series match. And I loved how Joe didn't even celebrate. I just walked away after. I thought that was great. So for Finn Balor and Samoa Joe, Ten. making a, a tag te- or making Oops. looking like a credible tag team on Raw this week, they get a perfect. Ten. They got a two ten because I hit the ten by accident. <laughs> there you go. They get, they get a double because I give I give that a ten too because that was actually really good. That they they pulled off some really good chemistry there. Um, it's probably because they faced each other so many times in NXT, so it was easy for them to do it. Imagine they go the, the Cesaro and Sheamus route with these two guys, and they become like a tag. Oh team. my god! Uh, I, that'd have to grow on me. I don't know if, how I'd feel about that. Uh, but I get into my list moment. Oh boy, this one's a toughie. Um, you know why? Because I can't really think of it off the bat. I'm not going to give it to what you think I'm going to give it to. Um. I'm just going to give it to the lack of the War Games promo for this week on NXT. I think they could have done a better job. I know they gave us that hype video, and the video was actually pretty well done. Like I said, the, who, the people of NXT that put those together are incredible. Um, I think they could have done something like physical in the ring. The hype has maybe had a big brawl between all six, te- you know, all three teams. They could have done something. Could have had Roderick Strong and Undisputed Era do something again, show some more deception, or show some more, you know, like Undisputed Era trying to get Roddy to turn. They could have done something. For them not doing anything on a go-home show, they get... You know what? You just made the list. They make the list. I'm sorry. They have to. Wow. Yeah. See, NXT isn't all rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. Uh... Oh, Michael Chow's here. He's late, but he's here. What's going on, Michael Chow? Guys, Michael Chow TV. He's got his own... (laughs) He's got his own wrestling podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's got his own wrestling podcast, and he's also available on Spreaker. Go give him a follow, and go give him a follow on Twitter at Michael Chow TV. If you like us, you'll definitely like his stuff. Michael Chow TV, what is going on? I'm going to give him an unfollow just for you saying that. <laughs> what? I don't know, man. Michael Chow, you know, he's got – him and James are doing his thing tomorrow. I feel like they're going to – do like an invasion on us or something. Are we going to get under siege by James like and I'm, uh, Michael Chow? That's what I feel like. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be like Kurt Angle and have my guard down. Like, you know. They're here. They're, they're here. here. <laughs> they have the fucking terrible walkie talkie that no one even was probably on the other line to hear. They're here. <laughs> no, it, the best was he took like two looks first. To see I know. He actually like standing there. Oh, oh man. All right, all right, all right. So we get into the last part of the show, and that's the tweets. Then we'll get in to the war game. Is it called Takeover Houston, or is it called Takeover War Games? Man, I've heard like uh, I don't understand. I've heard both. Mm-hmm. I've heard both too. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, get your tweets out there, guys. You want to tweet? Just tweet at the tweets I put out. Every Wednesday or Thursday, send us your thoughts and questions, and I get to read them right here on the air live. So we'll start out with Cupid Girl 125. She puts TakeOver is going to be an epic show, even though some people want Peyton to win the NXT Women's Championship. I'm still on the crazy side with my pick of the lunatic chick, Nikki Cross, to pull an upset victory. Hashtag, let's get crazy. Mm. So we got another Nikki Cross fan. Mm-hmm. She'd be a, a good underdog pick. I'm telling you right now, that's a, that's the sleeper in this match for sure is Nikki Cross. So, She's unpredictable, man. You never know. Yep. Um, my questions. 
If you had to bring back any match stipulation for NXT, what would it be, and who would you put in the match? Interesting question. Mine would be a first blood match between Aleister Black and Adam Cole, baby! <laughs> I like to know the, the first blood match. We haven't seen one of those in so long. When's the last time we had a first blood match? Um, it hadn't been before the PG era. It had to been like, I'm going to say either 2007, 2008 was probably the last first blood match. I don't That's know. Just any, a guess. Match with, any match with Ric Flair in it? <laughs> It no, you know, really and he lose. Happened. Yeah, he just he bled. Like he could have ran into the ropes head first and would have bled. Mine would be. I know WWE has had him in the past, but they've been terrible. I'd say an I quit match between Gargano and Champa. Ooh, that'd be sick. Have we seen an I quit match in NXT yet? Mm, I don't know. I think so. I would you want know? to see. An NXT oh. Roar Rumble. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll just NXT people, that's it. And winner gets, you know, a title shot. at the, like it, it, Get the NXT title on WrestleMania. Give it some hype. Uh, although yeah, Vince then, would probably put in a pre-show, but... <laughs> yeah, but then, then there wouldn't be a takeover. Oh, yeah, true. But fine, the, the winner gets the championship at takeover. Or... At, the winner gets to be in like the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Oh, there you go. That's kind of that's kind of cool. Because you know that that thing went downhill when Mojo Raleigh won it. Yeah. <laughs> it Gronkowski. Gronkowski. Terrible. Anyways, uh, she also puts also where the <laughs> where the ever loving hell is no way Jose. Do you think that they some that they something in mind they have, they have something in mind for him when he returns maybe a potential heel turn I don't know where the hell is he no way Jose is he injured or did you have nothing for him I don't know what's going on with him hmm oh who was the last person that beat him down wasn't it Sanity I think so that was a so while San- ago so Sanity like completely buried no way Jose to like into like irrelevancy. Like I, you'd think that he probably would have been called up by now if he's been gone that long, and he hasn't. So I don't know. I hope he comes back soon, man. I miss No Way Jose, man. He was really over the crowd, and you're starting to get really, really over it, and all of a sudden he's gone. So, um, <laughs> Michael Chow, Neville is currently in an I Quit match right now. <laughs> uh, and finally, do you see Lars Sullivan being the new Braun of Derby in 2018? Would you want to see Braun versus Lars match? Yes, I would love to see a Braun versus Lars match. Again, I need Braun. They need more superstars that are bronze level, man, because he's gonna run out of people to face, and it's just gonna be like he'll just well, be there once in a while. You know, while. if Lars Sullivan gets called up, he's gonna get the Braun treatment where he's got to go through Big Show and Kane first. Oh God, I hope that they're hurt or they just don't want to come back by then. <laughs> You don't want to see Big Show versus Lars Sullivan. Oh, yeah. Lars Sullivan beat up No Way Jose. That's right. (laughs) I remember that. And now he's gone. Maybe it's an injury angle. Maybe he actually did get hurt. We'll have to look into that. I should be looking into that. Damn. Damn on me. Shame on me. He's an unsafe worker, man. Big Show needs to turn him into a safe (laughs) worker. He's an unsafe worker. (laughs) So I just got a few with Paul White first. Oh, Oh, you not just say Paul White. Come on, man. Okay, next question. Uh, that was it for the questions from Cupid Girl. But yes, I would like to see Braun versus Lars, but you know we're going to get other crap in between first. Yeah. <laughs> and the only last set of tweets come from our 2016 Fan of the Year. That's right. It comes from our 2016 fan of the year, and that is Michael Chow, and he gets his own theme music played right before we read his tweets live on the air. And guys, you want your own theme song? All you have to do is win the 2017 fan of the year, and to be entered into that, all you have to do is interact with us on Twitter or interact with us in the chat, and you're automatically eligible when you choose our fan of the year during our uh, 2017 No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast Slammy. So... So Michael Chow tweets. All you have to do is Bo leave. Bo leave that you will win and you can you could win. <laughs> uh, he puts go home show is okay, but sadly I have some cons. 
The Street Profits versus Tino and Erotic, Mo Erotic Moss match was kind of a letdown considering the nice build it had. And no one from the War Games match appeared, which I thought was a big letdown. So exactly what I said on the show. Yes, I thought it was a big letdown as well, Michael. I think they should have done something with them. And they didn't. We only got the small promo package. And I know the Street Profits versus Tito and Riddick was an all right match. It wasn't the greatest, but it could have done. they could have done better with it. Um, next tweet, he puts... The top rope cross body. Book it for NHB <laughs> NHBWP Slammy 2017 Zelina Vega Manager of the Year. Hashtag make it a difference. <laughs> and it's a gif of actually like a Drew McIntyre catching her with one hand. <laughs> yep. Oh, that man. Was sweet. And lastly, hashtag Michael Chell super creative. Would you like to see Triple H come out during NXT TakeOver and suddenly get attacked by SmackDown Live? That would be a great build for Survivor Series, and no one would see it coming. Hashtag NXT under siege. Well, remember when Seth Rollins just showed up at NXT that one time? Yeah. And, like, see, called out Triple H. Oh, it's tough, because I, I, Triple H is going to be in this match with people that he's groomed in NXT. And it's like, oh, like, do they turn against him? Do they go on his side? Is there going to be, like, a small NXT takeover angle at Survivor Series? Like... You know what I mean? It's tough to pull an angle like that. I'd love to see it, but ah, I get these like vibes that something's going to happen at Survivor Series that's going to involve Triple H and his NXT guys. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that would be cool because we saw we got the whole Seth Rollins thing appearing at TakeOver, and that was like the main thing that was talked about at that TakeOver. It's called so. TakeOver, right? <laughs> uh, so I'm taking over the show. <laughs> oh, God. But th thank you for your tweets, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys want to tweet, don't be shy out there. Let us know. Let us know your questions. Let us know your thoughts, and I'll read them live right here on the air. But we're going to get into our War Games predictions. But first, we're going to take a slight minute and a half break. I just need to clear my throat and drink a little bit of water here, and then we'll come right back into the predictions. So do not go anywhere. Do not change that dial or laptop, wherever you're listening to us from. Do not change it. We'll be back in a brief minute for some NXT TakeOver War Games predictions. 